Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. If you're a turkey hunter, you know you're looking at three dead birds, one at 10 yards, one at 25 yards, and one at 50 yards. These are patterns I got with my Mossberg 930 and Federal's new turkey load, the third degree. It's made with three different kinds of shots to give you lethal patterns and kinetic energy to get those birds that come rushing in, to get those birds that get hung up and everything in between. And that's why it's coming up next on Twang and Bang. The best way to show you what the third degree is made of comes from my SHOT Show footage. Federal had this great display at range day showing a loaded cartridge, a spent flight control wad, an unfired wad, and the shot as loaded in the third degree. Though I've actually killed turkeys with duplex loads before, there's a lot more that goes into the third degree than any other turkey load I've seen. The first 20% of the pellets out of the bore are number six flight stopper pellets with rings that help them to spread out fast. This opens the pattern to help you get birds up close that you'd otherwise miss with ultra tight patterns typical to most turkey loads. The next layer is copper plated number five lead and the final 40% consists of number seven heavyweight made of a tungsten iron alloy that retains energy better than lead to get those toms that get hung up. This payload is delivered by Federal's flight control wad, which opens from the rear for less disruption of the shot pattern. Also available in 3.5 inch shells, I'm testing the 3 inch shells because that's what I'll be using in my Mossberg 930. I'm also using a Weaver Caspa 1 to 4 power turkey scope, and whenever possible, I'll be shooting from a sled to save my shoulder during testing. Links to my reviews on the Mossberg 930 and the Caspa turkey scope can be found in the video description below. So this is either going to be really cool, really messy, or it could be a bit of both. For ballistics testing, I'm using a real turkey's neck, got at the grocery store. <laughs> And uh, whew, my truck smells because I have about eight of them just to make sure I had enough. But we're at 25 yards. Since this is sighted in for shooting off of my shoulder and the point of impact was very different between uh, how I had it sighted in and shooting off of the, the uh, fire control sled, uh, I'm going to shoot this off of my shoulder. <laughs> Let's see what we get. Well, I see the turkey neck down on the ground and a whole lot of holes all in that target. Let's go check that out. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> okay, so that's the pattern. And you can see where it actually blew right through the turkey neck and right into the target. Oh man, I might have to rinse this off. But there's the turkey neck. Lots of holes. I can see lots of holes. I'm going to rinse that off and see what we get. You can see there are holes all along it. Many, many holes. And I don't even need to cut it open. I could feel it's broken and a bunch of pieces in there. That neck is shattered. It shouldn't be moving the way this can. And I can feel it clicking. And, uh... That's pretty awesome. And of course, if you look at the target itself, there are plenty of pellets in the brain area too. So this is one seriously dead Tom. Click, 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 click. That's a broken neck. Federal promises enough kinetic energy at 50 yards to kill a Tom bird. So we're gonna test that out with another turkey neck. So I counted five entrance holes and two exit holes that are really easy to see on camera. There's one entrance hole there, there's two, there's three entrance holes there, there's four right there, and um, boy, these fascia, they slip right back over. There was a fifth entrance hole back in here, and uh, the neck is broken in there again, even though it was only five, I think that one is what broke the neck. The, there actually was an exit wound that I could, I saw when I was rinsing off a pellet came through and I, I rinsed the pellet off. You can see a little bit of red right there. That's where the tissue was pushed through and I can't, I can't line the holes up again 
to make it look like an exit wound, but there was a pellet and I think it might have been caught on camera before I took it over to get rinsed off. That was certainly fun, but there's still a lot more to learn about how this load works, which means shooting contractors paper at different distances with different chokes. I'm glad Federal supplied the ammo because that meant a lot of shooting. Though I did draw aiming dots on the paper, I'm not worried about where the shot hits at this point because I will fine tune my scope once I pick a choke. With five weeks of testing, I've made a lot of targets, but I think this is the best one to start with because it helps to illustrate one of the main problems that third degree is trying to solve. This is at 10 yards, and these are two really popular number six shot turkey loads. I call this Brand X because I'm not trying to single out any particular brand. A lot of different companies make a turkey load just like this. It's copper plated shot, it's got a standard wad, so it produces not such a bad pattern at 10 yards, but by 35 yards, it's gonna fall apart. This isn't marketed for, for shooting at those long toms, those ones that get hung up at 40 yards. This one is, it's the Federal number no. six with the flight control wad, which is actually the same wad that's in the third degree, but this is all one kind of shot and it produces a very, very tight pattern at 10 yards. Here is your average size tom head and neck. And you can see while you would get enough coverage to just take that head right off if you made a perfect shot, if you're 10 yards from this tom, this tom can see you really easily. You make that last minute adjustment of your point of aim with that shotgun, he's gonna see you and because he doesn't have really good binocular vision, he's gonna start bobbing his head back and forth to get some parallax to see how big you are, see how close you are. And that bobbing back and forth is enough for turkeys to get missed. It's happened many, many, many times. That is why Federal decided they wanted to make something different. Even with your standard number six without something like the flight control wad, it doesn't take a lot of movement of that turkey to get missed at 10 yards. But wait till you see what we get with the third degree. And here's the third degree at 10 yards. I find this target fascinating for two reasons. Number one, I think it's pretty clear that that flight stopper shot is doing its job. These patterns are about twice the width of the standard number six federal out of the flight control wad, which is designed to hold the shot pretty tightly. So this is actually giving you about the same spread, even a little bit more than that traditional old school number six shot turkey load from the previous target. But look at this with the full choke. This is giving you two and a half times the width of, of spread of the standard federal number six with the flight control wand. It's twice the spread of that old school number six shot. This is a fantastic pattern at only 10 yards. Here you go with Mr. Tom here. He's bobbing, he's weaving. Third degree don't care. That is a dead Tom. You are not gonna lose this guy because he's too close. But this is the full choke. This is the turkey choke right here with the, with the most restriction. This is the most open, and yet this is the one with the best pattern at 10 yards. It shows that you have got to pattern your loads with your gun and a bunch of different chokes to see which it's gonna work best in. And clearly at 10 yards, the full choke is the one we wanna use. Let's check it out at 50 yards to see if this is gonna be the one that's gonna end up in my gun this season. Every brand of turkey load that I pattern at 25 yards, every choke, guaranteed tom taker. That 25 to 30 yards is that sweet spot for every turkey load that's out there. So we're gonna push it straight to 50 yards. If you remember, the improved cylinder choke gave us the tightest pattern at 10 yards. I wanted to see, is this gonna give us the tightest pattern at 50 yards? It did not. It gave me 36 pellets in a tenant circle drawn around the densest portion of, of the pattern. I'm using a scope so I could just sight it in for wherever that dense portion of the pattern is so I don't care where it's gonna be on this piece of paper. You can see it's actually, that you've got some portions that are guaranteed Tom killing portions of the pattern. You got good density in a couple different areas. But you get outside of that point of aim, it doesn't take very far and that Tom is getting away with the improved cylinder choke. Here's Mossberg's factory turkey choke. It came with the 930. It's an extra, extra full choke. And it gave me 57 pellets in a 10 inch circle at 50 yards. Remember, it was the second tightest pattern at 10 yards. And it's easy to chase holes on paper, but 
clearly that has enough density to take a turkey anywhere around that point of aim. You could even shoot high and you're going to take that tombird. That is a lethal pattern for sure. Here's that full choke. That's the choke that gave me that really nice big pattern at 10 yards and it's giving me the tightest pattern at 50 yards. Basically it's the choke that's letting that third degree do its job. I got 68 pellets in this 10 inch circle and I could have drawn this circle anywhere around this area of the paper and I would have pretty much gotten the same result. That means I've got a very, very nice margin of error to get the job done if this turkey is out there at 50 yards. So this full choke is the one that's staying in my 930 for this season. But I, I also think that this pattern is a really good illustration about the fact that you can take a bird at 50 yards doesn't mean that you should. If you're going to be pulling a trigger on a tom bird at 50 yards, you want to make sure that he is alone. There's no bird that's near him because I got pellets all the way from there, actually past the paper, all the way at the very edge of this paper and probably sailing off to the right side of how I had this target set up. So you got to make sure that you understand your pattern at every yardage so you know how far away your target bird is, needs to be from other birds and make sure you don't wound other birds or kill other birds in the process of taking that gobbler that you want. <laughs> Tom's bobbing, Tom's weaving, third degree don't care. I really wish there was such a thing as third degree about 10 years ago when I was guiding a marine friend of mine on a turkey hunt. He was with the fleet anti-terror security teams, an excellent shot. And we called the turkey, he got in within, within eight yards. He pulled that trigger just as the turkey moved his head and that water shot went sailing right past him. My buddy didn't have a chance to cycle that action before that turkey was long gone. I have no doubt, no doubt whatsoever that if he was shooting this third degree, he would have bagged that bird. I cannot wait to try this out in the field and I have got an excellent chance to do that. I'm going on a guided turkey hunt in Illinois just next week. And if you want to see how that goes, be sure to follow me on Facebook at fb.com forward slash twangandbang.net. That's spelled out D-O-T-N-E-T. -E be sure to click the link in the video description below to learn more about Federal Third Degree. And be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang. And I hope to see you next time.